You're listening to Big World Network. I mean, the FSB had confirmed his suspicions. A Spetsnaz major. Perhaps it is time to retire. Pushing this one is ill-advised, but I doubt my employer will respect that. A priest? So the lion is now a lamb. Bah! This coffee is swill. Closing the small screen, Vadim sighs and, looking at his half-empty cup with a grimace, stands to leave. Kat stares at the image on her screen and cross reference Agitated by the suggestion of coincidence, fist tightly clenched, the smuggler breathes deeply and slowly, trying to calm an impulse to smash something. Fool! The prattling of an old man. The experiment stands. We shall see how well-connected the pastora remains. As for Vadim, something special. Mother Steel glares at Raphael, knowing him only as Mr. Ortega. He's nervously pacing back and forth in front of her with the garden shears, trying to summon his courage for the grisly task of more mutilation. He was delegated the task after a heated argument, not having been the one to take her first digit. Swallowing hard, Mother Steele replies, Be a shame if you let an old woman die of dehydration instead of killing her yourself. May God grant you mercy, Mr. Arth you and that other puta. Red-faced and panting, he grabs a handful of the elderly woman's hair, jerking her head back up. He watches as tears stream down the lined face, the outline of his hand visible even in the gloom. Proof. I have to send proof. Tightening his grip on her hair, Raphael raises the shears. Armed with an MP5K submachine gun and a Kimber 45 beneath her bulky clothing, she focuses her considerable will on the task at hand, throttling her personal concerns at the consequences of her actions. Hang on, Nancy. I'm coming for you. And hell's coming with me. You gave her a haircut! Hector Deem here to interrogate the old hag. Jaw clenching, Hector continues. Give her some water. The boss wants her hydrated and conscious when he gets here. Visibly paling, Raphael absentmindedly covers his aching right hand. I thought we were doing this alone, he says, subdued. Nervously glancing at that up, I'm taking the son of a bitch with me. Vadim contemplates his instructions while methodically scanning the distant structure with binoculars. Ah, there you are. Amateurs. This should be simple enough, and then I can disappear for good. The timing will be tight, but doable. Vadim was picked up on a security camera thirty minutes ago, four blocks from your current location. Cross-referencing and backtracking timestamps confirm Hector's arrival to the location an hour before. I've contacted Mac and the local feds. They're scrambling together SWAT teams. Clenching her fist and taking a deep breath, Tammy blows it out and draws another before answering. Voice devoid of emotion, Kat replies stonily before severing the connection. Sorry, MT. Just like Tomsk in 03. Orders. Tammy smiles at the click of disconnection. On that mission, their target had been three blocks north and one block east when aborted. Vadim carefully climbs over the debris, obscuring his chosen path through the basement. The additional weight of the bulletproof vest is satisfied that his entrance is unobserved. Quickly approaching the light spilling from the room ahead, the shadow of Hector's pacing back and forth is distinctly seen in the flickering light, presumably looking for something there as well. Her grasp on consciousness is tenuous. Her head bobs up and down at irregular intervals. Darkly clad and slim, wearing a demon mask, the figure seems to float across the space, a wicked-looking blade gleaming in a gloved hand. She blinks, and the room is empty again. Stepping into the basement, he pauses to wipe his sweating palms on his pants, taking a firmer grip on the pistol. Light spills into the gloom from the partially collapsed further voices coming from the far end of the building. He walks through a maze of small hallways and rooms crammed with leaking pipes and ancient electrical serviceways. A high pitch